My parents didn't love me, so now I joined this street crew, get into graffiti. I was actually one of the most well-known graffiti artists at the time, so that became my identity. And now that you said, oh, have you heard of him? You heard of him? That was reinforced, so I kept playing up to it. Now I'm validated. Now I'm loved. Now I'm cared for. Here's the greatest thing for everybody watching this. If you're not a millionaire, why not? Why aren't you the millionaire? Because there's enough information out there. We didn't have that information. Mm. In Redfin, it was so insular. We were our own world. You couldn't get a cab to go in there. You couldn't get people to walk past there. It was so isolated that we just were our, our own world. I think the biggest thing then is what I started to do, recognize that and say, I'm going to control my own destiny. Instead of sort of just surviving, now I'm going to thrive and how am I going to do this? The role modeling could be behaviors, self-limiting <laughs> thoughts, how you conduct yourself, how you speak, the tone of your voice, the language that you speak, which meant half of my words were swearing words or pig Latin back in the day. That's how I grew up. Mm -hmm. It was totally normal. And they go, all these SJs, out on the street that's just what they know and that's all they're doing you talk to them and they say i wish i knew differently who came up with the idea to rob a bank when we were kids we were always i was very innovative so we'd start out um distracting shopkeepers go out the back to open right, safe okay. and it was a very lucrative like man you can make some serious money in okay. one day and we'd just travel australia He's traveled the, you know, you could travel the world doing that, distract the shopkeeper, go at the back, open the safe, take the money. And, you know, just so everyone gets context to this, we will build of a way where we thought it was normal. It doesn't justify it. I just want to put it on camera. I don't promote it, but I also want people to know context of if I can come from that far deep, then mm. you can do anything you want within your life. There's no excuses, right? And then we sort of transition into walk past banks back in the day and they didn't have sort of the tech that they do these days mm -hmm. and the cameras that they got everywhere. And we'd seen people depositing money on counters. And I was like, I reckon I could snatch that and run, run off. And they go, you're going to have to dive across them. I was like, ah, don't worry about it. We'll do that. We we're all crazy. And if we got it, we were very violent because that's how we grew up. Violence was your first response. And I was like, I'll do that. Sweet. Hold the door. And the rest was history, bang. And that was my first major sentence. I got three years for a bunch of, we went all day. Um, I think we got 180 grand in the day. And wow. like, yeah, you know, to us it was nothing. It was easy. Just pull up, walk in, bang. Some people would, do, I think, be so stunned by it that they'd just stand there and go, what just happened? Mm. They wouldn't even chase you and you'd run out and have your days. Like, yeah, you know, I mean that respectively um, to those that were on the other end of that. Uh, we just were built wrong, man. And if I, you know, if I'd grown up a different way and I had the role modeling, people were easy to judge. My advice to everybody out there, if you've got the judgment, sit with one of these young kids. If you understand my parents were sitting, you know, on a pay packet day on a Friday, no food in the fridge, music full blast, rats running around the house, broken glass, broken graffiti all through the house, swearing, Domestic violence, fights out the back lane, um, no sleep during the night, on a bed bug um, mattress, foam mattress with 13 other kids. Um, my groin area, sorry, but it was look, it was more like a cheese factory because I hadn't washed or the hygiene wasn't mm. taught to us, sores all over my arms. Um, just like, and then people say, oh, I'll just lock him up and throw away the key. Mm. The only... My parents didn't love me, so now I joined this street crew, get into graffiti. I was actually one of Australia's, or New South Wales's most well-known graffiti artists at the time. So that became my identity. And now that you said, oh, have you heard of him? You heard of him? That was reinforced, so I kept playing up to it. Oh, now I'm validated. Now I'm loved. Now I'm cared for. These people actually care for me where my parents didn't. So people out there, if you're listening to this, Pause for a moment, sit down with one of these kids, go into a detention centre or something of that nature, share your time, share you, what you've learnt that we didn't learn growing up because how do you learn values when you can't you can't be, when you can't see it, right? People are like, and I, you know, here's the greatest thing for everybody watching this. If you're not a millionaire, why not? Why aren't you the millionaire? Because there's enough information out there. So... Being able to, like, you've got the information. We didn't have that information. Mm. In Redfin, it was so insular. We were our, our own world. You couldn't get a cab to go in there. You couldn't get people to walk past there. It was so isolated that we just were our, our own world. And that meant that I was learning off who, drunks, people that have been locked up, criminals. What do you reckon I'm going to be? And I don't, I didn't want to be that. I just hustled. That's how we... <laughs> 
get food on the table because on Friday night there's no food in the fridge. That party goes all night and goes all weekend and I get to school on Monday and I'm falling asleep and the teacher's like, Morgan, are you, are you bored or something, mate? And I'm like, fuck, oh, if you only knew. Mm. Um, I go up in the corner and I was like, cheer in, I'm going to have a sleep. But like the disconnect between understanding what we're talking about and trying to, it's like financial advice, right? If you're doing it for a long period of time, I know a lot about advice I've been given through the adv financial advice that we, uh, advisor we have. But then trying to go out and say, I know everything compared to what you know, it'd be crazy. It's just, I don't know what I don't know. Share that with the world. And some of that stuff is so simple. The role modeling could be behaviors, self-limiting <coughs> thoughts, how you conduct yourself, how you speak, the tone of your voice, the level of your voice, the language that you speak, which means half of my words were swearing words or pig Latin back in the day. That's how I grew up. Mm -hmm. It was totally normal. And they go, all these SJs out on the street, that's just what they know. And that's all they're doing. You talk to them and they say, I wish I knew differently. I wish I'd seen something different. And someone like Spanion, who's been able to flip that and use that mm. same skill set into a great tool for himself, happy days. And, and we could have so many more contributing community members of high value because they're hustlers already, put them into workforces or their own businesses, they'll crush life. Yeah, the thing is, we live in a very selfish world, though. Like people just don't care. Like true story. It's 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 facts. Like mm. how many times, like even homeless people, right? Mm. First thing people will say is just lock them up. Like why are they in the streets? Or Kill they just, them. They like, just do say, something. Yeah, or they just assume that they're they're homeless because they're drug ad drug yeah. addicts, or they're this, or they're that, whatever it is. And there's something I was reading about, like the food bank. And you look at the number of people that queue up for the food bank, not because they have gambled away their income or they're just bad financially. It's just that life is so hard for them. They can't get fresh fruit and veg onto their kids' plate or put it into the lunchbox. And you're like, I'm having to get up here and practically beg for food um, just so I can give my kids fresh produce. I'm not sure. doing it because I enjoy it. It's because I have no choice but to. True, true and, and we're so quick to judge. I think the biggest thing then is where, what I started to do, recognize that and say, I'm going to control my own destiny. And instead of sort of just surviving, I went, no, I'm going to thrive and how am I going to do this? So I just started to say, I'm going to create it all myself. Because you can imagine after 20 <coughs> years as a bank robber coming out of jail, it's the Jammer Gang, articles being written up. I was like, oh, yeah, who's going to give me a job? I'll do it myself. And you know what? I do stuff really well. I was a competitor. I've got the skills transition. I did a skills audit on myself and I said, what have you got? That sort of thing. I, I called a live op autopsy on how you built, mm. cut myself open, started to navigate through it all, and it took some time. But I've refined that so a human could come into our space and go out performing better within three months. I'm talking they could be through any form of abuse, growing up the way we did, and then perform at a different level. But the funniest thing was over time, and this is the craziest thing about society, I thought they'll judge me, but then when we go into these programs, I'm like, they just feel like me as well. And they're making bad decisions, whether it's around the foods they're eating, the way they're living, you know, gambling, um, drinking every weekend, maybe bendering on the weekend as an example. And that was a normal way of life, dealing with their emotions through the week. And I'm like, is this, is this what we call life? What do you define it as life? And once they started to do that, mm. we had people have these realizations. I want more from life. Mm. What's it look like? Where's it happen? Who are you with? What are you doing? Let's make that happen. So filling those gaps in between, we help people identify how they're built, who they want to be, and the space in between, that abyss in between. And we've cleaned that up and made it you know, life-changing for people.